This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment and lifestyle stories. My name is Osi Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Olua oh, We don't have an wow, amazing wow. co-anchor, it's interesting co-anchors. Fantastic co anchors. I'm not in the mood. Every time she says it, have you ever no. given her a compliment okay. and putting those adjectives? Uh, well, I've and noticed then when it. you don't get it, you're not asking. Well, I have to notice. We have to notice. Please, you are doing well. <laughs> oh, <my>. <laughs> 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 All right, okay. moving we'll on to the stories for this episode. A lady shares how she intervened and cautioned the man who was touching a seven year old inappropriately. So um, I will definitely have the story on the screen. What I love particularly about the story is the fact that she did not look away to say, ah, it's not my not child. My um, or try to take pictures and videos and then make sensations out of it before doing anything. She decided to take um, matters into her hands in yeah. the best way possible and also educated the mother of the child because she was looking at it um, as, I mean, he's helping out, he comes around, um, helps in my cooking. I think she fries akara and um, the things we call fry, akara and yam and all that. I feel like taking some now, right? But I, I just love what the she did. Local will just come out. No, Elsie <sighs> loves food. Mm, not just food, local food. It's mm. in the local now. There are certain things that we talk about that the local girl will just come out. <laughs> well, I don't understand. But you don't want me to be local. You don't want me no, to it's fine, it's my fine. local side. No, 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 it's good. A local girl. Momo. Momo. <laughs> if I mm. please talk about it. That's why you always give me all your chick ways. <laughs> <laughs> She's not used to that. <laughs> you? you will collect her. I'm more. sorry. Um, <laughs> um, all right. Okay, you want to go? Um, I think... Um, Parents, now I want to. Um, it's not. I like what the girl did. It's a good deed. Like you said, she didn't look away and all of that. But parents need to start focusing on their children. Like um, the woman was like, "Oh, he's a good person. I dropped this. Why would you even want to drop your child with a neighbor of the opposite sex?" I don't know. It's just a question. I don't think I would do that, regardless of how good you are, regardless of how responsible I think you are. But I just think there's certain things that are dangerous with certain um, sexes. Now, I'm not talking about just male or female. I don't even think I would want to drop my male child with a female neighbor either. No, that, that's not even the case these days because we're, we're just in a complicated world. Yeah. I don't think and then I don't think it's supposed to be a bad idea, yeah. but because of yes, the things yes, we because read, of the things we've and even when you say you want to drop your seen, son or your male child with a male caregiver, it I mean, still happens. Guys molest guys. Then now. the second part is um, why would a mother, no matter how nice the man is, no matter how good he is, and he has his hand on your seven-year-old daughter's waist. She wasn't there. No, she wasn't there, but I'm saying that if, for him to be that confident doing that, right, that is something he could probably do in front of the mother. So why would you even let that happen to start with? Do you understand? Like, mm. I really don't care how good the person can be. I get be, where you're coming but, from, but we can't exactly blame this woman because she was coming from a place of um, need. Not even just need it, an innocent place. She wasn't thinking of it, her child. There's being nothing innocent anymore. I think. I, know, I, I, th I think I when I look at the story, I come. From, I look at it as a place as coming from need. There is a privilege to having options as to where to drop your kids mm. and. Mm. Um, sure. Sure. And all I saw was need. It happens to the most. Even even when we look at stats of horrible things that happen to women from the worst, it always goes down to people who are most vulnerable. Um, mm. Even when you hear dates that go wrong, is the lady that has to depend on the guy to take her home. So need always equals danger in this day and age. Mm. The more vulnerable you are, um, you can't. Um, she's frying things for goodness sake. She ha she needs help. Um, she shouldn't even have a child around um, frying things. It's just a, a, a unfortunate that, um, you know, that's the only choice, chance that she's got. But what, I, what I've seen in this is not that she's a bad parent or why did she do this or why. I think that the thing the thing that she lacked was the knowledge. And that's that's understandable. And that's why I commend the girl for coming in, not only to, to get involved with the man and the child, but also educate the woman on what statutory rape is like. Because um, it is statutory rape. Obviously, she must have broken it down to local man's language to understand that your child could actually be be in a sexual relationship with this person and you don't know especially for the fact that they're not all getting cozy she's not complaining because i remember when i was a kid even when i didn't know anything i i, I was telling my mom about the story when this, this story because this story has come out a bit and i remember someone one guy says sit down on your lay on my lap 
I didn't really feel like, oh, okay, this is why well, he's doing something sexual, but I knew it was uncomfortable. So I'm thinking if the girl doesn't think it's uncomfortable and she's even allowing all that to happen in public, we don't know what has happened in at private. the uh, in private. So a lot of education needs to go into the parents for being able to protect her minor. That she he could actually be um, in a romantic sort of relation, statutory rape, because if it's a minor, then it's statutory rape, mm. um, and just educate them on what that is. Mm -hmm. And um, regardless of. Um what anybody might think. And I know some come from the angle of the man might be innocent, but I don't think, personally, I don't think he's innocent in any way, because I, 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 don't, I don't know why you would touch your, anyone yeah. inappropriately. I don't even child, care about... Adult. There should be boundaries. Let's, yeah. let's learn to give people space. Don't hug anyone when they don't want to be hugged. Don't touch them inappropriately. Just put your hands by your side. It's yeah. not that difficult to do. I honestly do not care about the man's intentions, whether they, they are innocent or not. I just think you should be programmed, especially when it comes to a child. You have to be extremely careful. Yes, I understand um, people understand you need boundaries for everyone. You should have boundaries for everyone. But when it comes to a child, I think I'm just naturally programmed. I won't ask for anybody's child to come sit on my lap. You understand? Mm. Like, no matter how comfortable, even if it's my cousin or my little niece or something, well, men, I a wouldn't men, do that. People are creepy. But that's, a, that's true. People are very creepy. So I think it is, it is like, and I think the education is really important as well, yeah. especially the stages of um, familiarization, where they familiarize themselves with the victim, with the fam families of the victims, with the guidance of the victim. It's really important that we start informing parents because and, and, a lot of people just overlook the and I have to say, like we have to focus on the parents that need help. If you see human trafficking and all that stuff, it's with people that are poor. My auntie came, she said you can make hairdressing in Spain, and then they go traffic you. It's always with the people that need a lot of help and support. And I feel like that's where we need to start um, targeting. Obviously, there's a lot of um, NGOs that are already um, doing all that um, work, but I feel like we, in any way we can, the minding your business culture needs to know when to be implemented and when we need to stand for. Um, people who, who look finally, like they're in trouble. And finally, I think a, a lot of parents should learn how to communicate with their kids. Make them comfortable to the point whereby they can tell you anything and everything. Yeah. So in case um, there's a, a, a desperate man like this trying to touch them inappropriately, they might not get the meaning, but when they get back on, they'll be like, ah, uncle, this person was touching my... Do you understand? Mm. And that way, they get you get to find out certain things. Yeah. Do you understand? So learn how to speak to your kids. Don't make them be fearful of you. You don't have to still fear in them instead make them your friends and let them be able to tell you anything and have that confidence that okay my dad is my g my mom is my g all right moving on to the next story you don't have to be rude in your appearance to be sexy and this is coming from stella damasos um she said the way you carry yourself even in a pair of jeans and a sweatshirt can make head stone your confidence can be sexy your smile can be sexy your voice can be sexy even your eyes alone can make you sexy don't show it all or put everything out there to be called sexy you are enough thank you both for being polite by the way how do you mean you're not rude in your dressing are you what does being rude in your mm. even mean? Well, she just said that I think she explained it in her post by saying that um, you don't have to pop out everything for you. And that's, that's being rude? Yeah, well, that in our, in our language, I don't think it's rude. I, think I, I it's, mean, it's her language, right? Wait, also think, what are we thanking us for? I, hmm? I'm rude, please. Because I pop it out when I want to pop it out. many days. I can be rude whenever. Oh, um, I, can, I can be polite. I can be rude. I can do whatever. Depending on where you're going to, I think there's some type of dressing that are really inappropriate for certain places oh really yes I if they're coming from you yes i do Do you remember when we had a conversation about yeah, dressing to church yeah. and if i was telling us how you can wear anything you want to anywhere <laughs> that it is your body and they don't have the right to send you out of church <laughs> wow 2020 hallelujah but rudeness huh? rudeness is when you're wearing like a super micro mini oh, oh now it's super very Oh, revealing wow. cleavage showing top and all of that why why can't why can't why can't, why can't walk, i wear that let's assume i'm the ceo of this company and then you walk into my office and the type of ceo that will say please go back and change that's why you're not the ceo because <laughs> <laughs> i trust my ceo <laughs> and you go, what would your ceo do hmm, he won't walk your ass though yeah even if he it. feels it's, yeah. it's inappropriate he might have a conversation with you but he won't walk you out yeah well, I would work you out or work like you out where. Let's not repeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no.
I, 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 I hear where she's coming from. The whole gist is nice. And the way she ended, I feel like if she didn't end it that way, I would have thrown the whole mm, thing yeah. out the window and just say, rubbish, go and sit down, sis. Mm. But when she said you're enough, it's a good message. But sis, like, let's not differentiate, or let's separate sexy and classy or attractive. Sexy is sexy. It is sexy. We know what when sex sells and we know when something not else be, sells. Yeah. The smile is not sexy. It's it can be called another thing, but, but it's think, not that. You cannot put a, a girl in lingerie sexy and then a girl that's like it's it's two different things. And I don't think one is better than the other, but they're two different things. And I don't want ha I don't really like the body shaming that's kind of prickling out of those comments where no, it's if you like, ask me, I just think it wasn't well um, phrased, but I think she was trying to talk about decency and self-confidence mm. basically i think she's just trying to let you know that look it's not until you reveal those things that you should feel like i'm sexy enough that sometimes you can just wear a pair of jeans and a top and still have the yeah. charisma well, and I, I, so think, I think i think she needs about, to break it down yeah, she more, needs to really I feel explain like she's talking it because about i think it's deeper than what we're reading on the surface I, I, right I, I, now what she's saying is just simple like if well i think what she's trying to say is confidence is also sexy yeah but i think she's talking of trying to when you're trying to attract yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of the opinion that you have to be very willing to attract um, um, the opposite sex, even you know, too much and, and so I've, I've also heard some men, I mean, you cannot generalize these things. The, yeah. things, the thing that works for A might yeah. not necessarily work for B. Yeah. But I've heard some men say they're actually more attracted when they are not seen. Like you're all covered and you still look really yeah, confident. Man, and like make me think about it. It's not right. all men. Some men. No, it's not. I mean, all, some want to see you being sexy. Yeah. And so, so it depends you, you, you on what works for you. So let it be about that, you. Really. The, the don't be covered up when we're together, but don't be all I remember Kirk Franklin's interview when he was saying, and this is Kirk Franklin, a gospel artist, telling his wife, telling us that he liked when his wife looked sexy outside. Mm -hmm. Like, where he even described what he likes the short skirts, the wedges, and everything. And I think my man is like that too. I'm the one who's always like, baby, please, let's. It's like, no, let it out. Like, you know, do all that. So it really depends on the man. Show them my Show property. Them what you've got, sis. And, 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 you know, the, the idea of telling people what to wear, mm -hmm. even if it's a good advice, still irks me. Yeah. Like, don't tell us that we can't, we can't be rude. I want be rude sis i want to show my boobs for me Deal i I, I can i can be anyone anytime i want Same. to like i want to a lot of people know that i love this whole thing we call a buyer like yeah. i love it and that's like what you would think that's the whole long dress that yeah. covers everywhere that's really oh, okay. big I, li I have a lot of that and I like yeah. it. I also love being sassy. I mean, if you're watching Tea Time, I've, I have appeared in yeah. so many different ways. And one thing you can be very sure of is that I'm never uncomfortable in any of them. Yeah. So if I wear it and I'm not comfortable, mm. then I would mm. not True. even leave yeah. my house. So I, I'm very comfortable with them that even if I get uncomfortable sometimes, <laughs> it's ain't true, true. But yeah, I think just do you and understand why you're doing it. Yeah. Don't do you because I, I don't even buy the idea, idea of looking good for a particular person. It's, yeah. it's fine when you're in a relationship and that person is able to communicate right. the 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 attire that he loves you more in yeah, and you feel yeah. okay let me dress more like to that point. right yeah. but when you're trying to look good think about you yourself, be comfortable yeah. and love yourself yeah. and i think that's that's the whole confidence you need yeah. for me self-love self-love stop I it now that you're talking about self that, self-love yeah. moving on to the next story someone says self-love was never meant to replace romantic love stop telling people to leave them okay sorry stop telling people to love themselves when they talk about wanting a significant other both are supposed to coexist wanting a partner does not necessarily mean you don't love yourself this is coming from a twitter user called lie is it lay or lie yeah something like that probably. lie lie okay so you think? self love um <laughs> it's funny because this it? morning because do you agree to her tweet yes or no yes i totally okay. agree to her tweet um i was just talking about self love but um like you said, they are both important. There's no way you can give what you don't have. Mm. So if you don't love yourself, are you even going to love anyone to start with? If you don't love yourself, you won't have a healthy relationship, if you ask me. So I think self-love and the other, mm. they go hand in hand. So and you I have don't to even love think it's necessarily about... You know when people say you have to love yourself to love somebody else? I get the whole idea. But I think for me, you have to love yourself to understand how you want other people to, to even love, love and respect you. Yeah. I think that's... It might seem selfish, but that's actually really important. Because no, sometimes no, no, you're single, you know what you want for yourself, you know how you want to live your life, you know what you want to do, and then suddenly you're in a relationship and everything flies out of the window. You're being the word manipulated and you're 
letting everything well. go because you're in a relationship yeah. and i don't think that comes from a place of self-love but uh, you know and i think that's why there's a confusion with it because i i i, I sort of sort of disagree and agree because mm -hmm. the two reveal each other depending on how much you love yourself can also or not love yourself can also reveal why you why you want a partner mm -hmm. and that's why i wouldn't really jump and say i agree fully if somebody keeps the going on and on about wanting a partner there could be a lack of self-love in that um it all depends on i think the key word to, to me in that statement is content how content are you because i could be content with something but doesn't mean that i necessarily don't want it to change mm -hmm. i can be content in my singleness and have and be happily single but that doesn't mean that i don't want a partner if you're not finding contentment in that singleness then yes <laughs> I like how you're like this. This is me. I thought you were putting your hands up too. No. No, 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 no. I'm just Don't I'm following hands. Try it. Oh. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just think that if you're not content in that, mm -hmm. and the, the way you want another partner can reveal your lack of self-love. Mm -hmm. And that's why the two things are always in relation. If I, I have friends that can't stay single, it's Tunde and then we're on about Tunde, how today is this and that. And, and how Tunde, Tunde just broke up oh, with you yes, now. And tomorrow them. from Tunde, it's There's like it's Jacob, and then it's My, um, Peter, and then and it's like... Jacob. I'm always like, so, okay. see, and you said you were in love with Tunde. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? But me, so yeah, and they I tell think you that's, that's the key thing. <laughs> or they tell you, ah, he didn't work out or yeah, something. They I'm always have a story for failed relationship. No, there's so, always a story for no, any no, don't, don't be sad, We're just saying that this, the, the, the frequency in how much you are searching for someone and it's not working can also just reveal that you might just need to work on yourself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Know what your standard is. Slow down before you get into a relationship. Well, I think they Try both, make it for work. me, I think they both work hand in hand. You can't give what you don't have, so you have to love yourself enough. And like Elsie also pointed out, sometimes, you, um, I don't call it selfish, you need to find out how you want to be loved. Mm -hmm. So it's the way you will love yourself that somebody else needs to love you even more, even harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time for a very quick break, but when we come back, we definitely have more to discuss. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal eye. You. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. Like I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Moving on real quick to Brian Mo. He says, I am not underrated. It is industry media and influencers that are retarded. End of quotes. You see the uh, way I mentioned the retarded. Don't point that. Don't don't why? don't do that. Why you why? why exactly are you doing that? Because I'm asking from the influencers aspect. When I you say influencers, in, yeah, exactly. Let me explain to you. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you are on this table. Mm. Having yeah. conversations about entertainment and entertainment industry, and we even have um, an episode where we review music and all, it makes you a music influencer. Oh. So when you say you're an influencer, it's you could be an influencer and have your own niche and say, oh, I'm a lifestyle influencer, yeah. I'm a music makeup, influencer, food. I'm a makeup influencer, mm. I'm a food influencer. But just mm. the fact that you are on this table, it means that you are an influencer. So all of us are on that table. I am. <laughs> I think people. The reason, maybe the reason why he really points at you is people have the con, the 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 perception that a an influencer has to have a lot of following on Instagram. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's mostly about social because that term was for social media, yeah. not really mm -hmm. for people. Like there's a lot of people who are influencing people's lives in real life, but no, don't have a social media following, so we wouldn't really call them influencers. And I think that name was just coined to be able to separate people who were famous on Instagram that were not celebrities mm -hmm. and didn't have but a But remember he did not use backing. social media influencers. Yeah, yeah. influencers. Influence. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So and I think I, we know that he's not even talking about just social media. Yeah, he's talking about definitely. anybody who has had a perception about 
about him that he doesn't like, really. He doesn't like or that doesn't really it's drum his, um, play his drums about his I music. Really, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what um, Primo is on about, but um, whatever it is. But I'm loving his vibe, good. though. If Bonaboy yeah. can be that cocky, I mean, he has not really done anything. Yeah, like 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 because, because, because Bonaboy is one of the most talented acts we have in Nigeria, and right. he doesn't get... Um, the kind of recognition I think he deserves. So if Brian he, Brian I mean Brian, Brian, sorry, Brian. Brian. Yeah. So did I, I say Bonaboy? Have a problem when people fight themselves. Maybe you are saying it now that he doesn't get the recognition it deserves. But left to me, I think Brian is one of the greats out of Nigeria. Do you understand? Who's saying that? Like where, where is what? that? There's where, no what? buzz around him. Not that he deserves. The, no, no, not, for people that listen to good music, I'm sure everyone knows Are you saying Brimo. that you really think that Brimo is appreciated and not underrated? I don't think he's underrated. Wow. I think it's because it's of his you style. You don't think he's underrated? I think it's because of his style. I think his style is underrated. Oh. I think there are a lot of styles that are know, underrated. Wow. <laughs> yes. There are different styles of music that are totally... Under, R so R on, you can actually say it's underrated to Brimo Shah. R&B is underrated. No. R&B is yeah. so underrated. In Nigeria, yes, it is. It is absolutely underrated. Um, what's it called? Reggae. Reggae music is underrated in Nigeria. Part of the ranking will be, can be put under that. Part of the Apart from part of the ranking, name someone so else. So you say that we're not talking about the style now. If I let's not look name some, focus, we're talking about I'm the talking artist. About the, you were talking about the artist. I'm talking about the style. Well, we're I think the conversation Brimo's is style, about the artist. Not yeah, and I'm saying that Brimo is fighting himself. He's having a one-sided fight here because some of us think it's great. Some of us think it's absolutely But And there's some of you enough quantity to say that everybody collectively agrees that he's great. Well, that's what I'm because coming it's not from about my it, point of view that I can agree with what people are saying. This conversation isn't that. about your opinion. It's about the statistics. Mm -hmm. Speaking okay, so when we're talking a, about the statistics, what's your Like Burna Boy now. A lot of people don't necessarily like Burna Boy's music, but you can't, you can't take away from the fact that he is... You can't call but him Burna Boy was underrated for a rated. long time. His style <laughs> right now was he's underrated for right a very speak, long time. As we speak, Burna Boy is rated. I think rap music is underrated. If you're what are you saying? What are you talking, I'm talking about? about? I'm talking about what I think. I'm okay. talking about what Let's I think so about Brimo right. saying that right. he's, in a, he's in a fight with himself with this tweet saying right. that he's underrated or whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. I feel like it's the style. It's what you're doing. If 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 a Naira Mali is not underrated, then I don't know why Brimo would think he's underrated. I think it's just the style of music. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm ex differ. He is very underrated. He's super talented, and he's. I, I feel like after he left, what's the name of that? Chuck City. Ch Chuck, uh, Ro Chuck, Chuck City. City. Yeah. After I left Chuck City, I really felt like his music went down. I is somebody I used to have all his albums, all of them. I really listened, but his latest one where he was naked and the piano thing, I didn't even actually download that album. I just saw that, and I feel like that's because of the marketing push mm -hmm. was a bit weak. Um, so he's not as, um, you know. Let's say respected as he sh as he should be, and I'm sure he's getting flack for that. Maybe they're saying like he's not, you know, he's not that popular or whatever. I'm not in his life, and I don't really research Bernard um, and Brian Moss. I don't know what he's feeding on, but I'm sure that this message is coming is this tweet is coming from there, and he, he has every right to be stung by that. I think he's super talented, and he deserves more, much more than he's getting. Um, but to say that people are retarded is a bit of a strong word. Mm. Now we even call it the R <laughs> word. Uh, people don't even use that in medical terms anymore for yeah. people who are more or less now calling um, people that. But he's in his feelings and he's allowed to It's a one-sided fight, like mm. I said. Anyway, I, I, I think he should just um, slow it down a bit because the industry is now getting even bigger and um, the number of radio stations you have and number of songs you can even play per time. So you have like a hundred artists you need to play their songs and you have so many songs you like this one you forget this one you're working with this one so sometimes it takes a level of consistent push like you're talking about yeah. marketing so i feel like his current team um they're not doing a lot of marketing yeah. for him but that doesn't take away the fact that he's, he's still good. great and sometimes even these influencers which is the word i want to use actually people like joey akan and Koda are writing about um music, music and the music artists in nigeria sometimes you really have to be in their faces for them to want to talk yeah. like about you even your PR team have to deliberately tell them you know what we want you to criticize this yeah. we want you to talk about what he's doing and how he's doing it there are a lot of people to talk about and there are really few in that space to talk about all these people so I mean Brian Moore, like he said he's, you said he's not underrated I mean. as far as I'm concerned all right but I we, we, we love you basically <laughs> and that's how we wrap up this episode of tea time 
Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all live exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch it time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my amazing co anchors, <laughs> Ife Omai and Ife Olu <laughs> and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa Stay Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay with us.